Hey guys, welcome back. This week we're talking about Gold Fame Citrus. Uh, I'm sorry I'm posting this video a little bit late. I wanted to give everyone a chance to start making their comments to each other and getting their own reactions out before I piped in. Uh, I can already tell that uh, some folks thought this novel was pretty great and pretty radical. Other folks are scratching their heads going, what in the world did I just read? And that's wonderful. But all the range of responses, I'm looking forward to it. Mostly what I want to talk about is how this novel portrays that real dystopian uh, kind of world that we were talking about or looking at in the IASS papers and even in Jameson's uh, uh, dystopian vision or, or talking about the fall of, of the utopian possibilities of postmodernism back in week one. I think in Watkins' novel, we really see that coming to the forefront here with this ruined, almost bombed out Los Angeles, <laughs> overrun with gangs of, of drug peddling uh, 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 thieves and, and, uh, and, and the homeless who are trying to evade eviction by force of some kind of weird military presence. Um, and then this pseudo eco cult you know, living on the fringes of this ever encroaching dune sea that is very quickly swallowing up hundreds and thousands of miles of, of land. And in both cases, I think the, uh, the, 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 the misery or the, the destruction or the ultimately um, uh, 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 compulsion for, uh, for, for, for the demise of mankind really is on the forefront of what this future world of Watkins novel is, uh, is depicting. Very much we can ask ourselves, why this dystopian landscape? Why or, or what is this doomed sea meant to represent? Um, how is Luce and her, uh, um, <laughs> her trauma and her exploitation and her uh, um, being subjugated under this crazed, um, pseudo um, maniacal, you know, religious leader of sorts, this Levi, uh, very, very clearly a religious name to begin with, uh, meant to reflect a kind of cultural touchstone or a kind of um, a perversion of religion and a perversion of the connection of environmentalism. Uh, Levi himself is a great antagonist. He is uh, Evil to be sure, but also he is a portrait of an environmentalist. Uh, he he creates that primer of uh, of uh, of flora and fauna that live in this dune sea. Whether it's made up or not, it's still a kind of ethos. It's a kind of ideology unto itself. And Luz, and, and as well as uh, um, the whole troop of people living in their buses and vans that are ever moving, um, have bought into this. And that kind of um, community that springs out of it. We can ask ourselves too, is that a utopian, um, a, a, a contrast, a utopian contrast to the living hellscape that is the Los Angeles that Luz and Ray flee from with this child Ig? Um, I think there's a great amount of, uh, of room for comparison and contrast to the environments of the novel. So much so that I'd like to just briefly talk about a return to that uh, laundry list of eco-criticism questions that the Purdue Owl website primer brings up. I think if you were to start an analysis of this novel, beginning there is a wonderful place to go. Namely, think about that very first question that's at the bottom of this webpage. How is nature represented in this text? Think about what this dune sea, uh, how it's depicted in this novel. It swallows everything in its past, uh, uh, in its path, uh, whether it's whole towns, whether it's families, whether it's uh, businesses, whether it's ideals, right? This, this, this dune sea is both a great devourer of physical things and also of metaphor, of, of uh, symbols. And I think that's interesting because what we're seeing here is is a world is nature reclaiming um, its primacy, reclaiming its uh, um, its foothold over mankind versus mankind dominating. Right, so it's westward expansion of nature, and and it's mankind fleeing from that. So it's kind of a <laughs> a reverse uh, um, uh, uh, manifest destiny. Right, this dune sea is unstoppable. This dune sea is going to go across the whole country eventually. That is the idea there. Um, so much so that, that part of the novel, one of my favorite sections of the novel, in fact, uh, begins at book two, starting on page 113. Um, wonderful descriptions of this history of this Dune scene as if it's a character, right? As if it is a living, breathing thing and all the things it swallows and all the attempts that mankind uh, has, has tried to stop it or study it or figure it out or plead with it. Um, and yet this, this, this nature, this... Um, 
result of of mankind's uh, potential abuse and exploitation of land, of of the world, of resources. This reclamation that the Dune Sea represents very much is a kind of knocking you on the head metaphor or allegory that the characters in the novel are both uh, uh, fleeing from, fighting against, living in, and ultimately um, seduced by. In all those cases, I think we also see tropes of Clyfi coming back. Um, Levi as a character is, uh, is a pretty classic reinvention of the uh, messiah complex kind of uh, character that we see in, in sci-fi and cli-fi and fantasy and, and all kinds of, uh, of genre books like that all the time. He is a leader, he is enigmatic, he is uh, passionate, he is um, sensual, he, uh, I mean he is, he is seductive, right? He is um, he's a Lothario in, in ways. He has a hold. He has a hold on these people that he is um, that, that live among him in a way that they revere him. They trust him. They follow him. Even if they know he's full of it. Even if they know he's corrupt. Even if maybe they might even know that he is uh, playing both sides. You know, he's um, he is not a perfect being, and yet they still follow him as if he has an answer. And that is a trope of, of any kind of, of genre fiction in that this is the voice of faith, the voice of passion. Luz comes into that, um, and very quickly she is under the spell of Levi. Now, another analysis that we can work with is ecofeminism. What is it that Luz goes through? What is it that Luz uh, gets from this relationship? What is she um, beholden to? How is she exploited? As I'm sure you already know, there's some very explicit scenes in this book that are unnecessary perhaps but also we ask ourselves what's going on there how is her body being uh, exploited how is her personality being exploited how is she drugged into submission into sub subjugation which very much is part of uh, what ecofeminism and feminism um, wants us to think about I think Watkins very clearly draws these kinds of um, scenes out where Luz is um, at the mercy of Levi, of Ray, of other characters in this book, and she is constantly um, unable to act on her own or act for herself. Um, and then we have to ask ourselves, what is it that she has that she, or why does she give up Ig at the end? Why does she want Ig to begin with? What is it that her, uh, in her, thinks she can take care of a child when she can barely take care of herself? Um, is that also a connection with this dystopian versus utopian uh, kind of uh, play of tropes? I mean, the nuclear family, right? The mother, the father, the child in Ray and Luz and Ig. Um, that is this <laughs> hellscapes kind of version, the poster children of who's going to survive or who's trying to survive. That too, I think, is worth talking about and worth analyzing. Um, in any case, this novel is, for me, a riot. It is, it is incredibly bizarre. It is incredibly shocking at times. It is incredibly violent and tragic and also hard to read. Um, certainly, I think, reading this, you can't help but feel an emotional connection, feel revulsion, feel, feel fear, real fear for the characters and the kind of world, both of this fallen, you know, uh, after the fall Los Angeles and also this um, uh, living nightmare Dune Sea eating everything in its path um, and then the kinds of characters, the kinds of narrative and ultimately the kind of, of failures and tragedies and redemptions that try to, of the characters that try to come out of this environment. Um, very different from Clade, uh, but I think it's a great way of, uh, of looking at the extreme side of what Cli-Fi has to offer. Looking forward to our comments, looking forward to our uh, conversations. Uh, keep up the great work, uh, and we'll, we'll talk soon.